Hello everyone, welcome to Owlet Season 3.9 Week 2 Day 1. Today we have our match between Storybook Villains versus Everfrost. Storybook Villains coming off a 3-2 win against SpongeBob Mac and Cheese and Everfrost coming off their own 3-2. And Joe Razor, who do you think is the favorite for this game? Yeah, thank you uh, once again. But yeah, like you said, we have a uh, match between Everfrost and um, storybook villains and when you look at the standings you look at what these teams have put together so far through the season there's not really a um, there's not really a massive favorite I would tend to, I would tend to say the favorite goes slightly towards um, storybook villains but it's still not uh, I don't think you can really favor one team largely over the other I think this should be a close and good game um I think Storybook Villains, though, should have the slight edge in this match. I would not be surprised if they do manage to pull off a win. Yeah, and with the, we've seen a lot of close games between, with these teams in them. Do you, th do you think it's going to be close as we've seen from these teams, or do you think one team just see takes advantage, seizes it, rolls with it all the way through? And what do you think is going to be the key for one team doing that or stopping it? <clears throat> I think the key to whoever is able to take this match comes down to who understands the meta currently. Um, the meta right now, I think, should be more defined than it is. You see teams kind of hopping around a lot with the off-tank and DPS line. I think we'll see even more of that due to some of the Echo uh, nerfs that have rolled through recently. Um, but I think Wrecking Ball Diva, I think it's without a doubt the best tank line you can run in the game on 90% of things. Uh, there's a few circumstances where you may want to run a Brawl Comp, but 9 times out of 10, you're going to be running with this. Wrecking Ball Diva, but for the rest of the uh, for the rest of the team, it's people seem to be less certain on what they want to run. I tend I tend to think Echo is still very strong. Um, I think Echo is still extremely strong. So the I think seeing some form of Echo with a Tracer, uh, possibly an Ash, depending on the map. But I think some Echo Tracer, even though Echo and Tracer have gone nerfed, I don't think they're super substantial. I still think uh, Echo and Tracer should be the two main DPS lines for these teams. And then the support line, move on to that. Uh, three different parts of a team. I think that support lines should be pretty stable with Zen Mercy. Uh, but we are getting ready to get into our first map here. We're going to be over on Li Zhang Tower. We're going to be starting over on Night Market. Absolutely. We've seen this map a lot. So we'll see if anyone pulls out something interesting, something strange, something new, or if it's just the bug standard we that we always see. Yeah. We, uh, now we are going to see Wrecking Ball. On that Wrecking Ball, no surprises there from <laughs> Everfrost. Everfrost, like you mentioned, the Diva, the Ball. They, we are getting a Faro, but it is Li Zhang, so it, the, it's not too surprising. On the side of SBV, however, we are seeing a Zarya Winston with a Genji. I don't know if they're going to stick with it, but I if they not. do... <laughs> I swap off the Genji, go with us to the Metro, <coughs> specifically for this point, and then get way more value. There it is, Sim. Absolutely. Uh, comes yep, out, you can teleport immediately, get to the point, especially because they have uh, some form of, like, something close to a Brawl comp. They're actually going to switch off back onto the Genji, so it's going to be what we saw. I think they're going to be in a lot of trouble here, especially against this... Kind of uh, wrecking ball comps. Oh, and wrecking ball already gets Echo Force on the boob, showing that he can actually play wrecking ball. What a surprise! He's gonna get stunned, but he's gonna live through the life of a main tank. It's never easy, but already an advantage here for Everfrost with the wrecking ball on that early pick, and they do have the comp advantage. Cobalt almost gets knocked off, but he's going to be able to jump back on. And Storybook Villain's kind of in an awkward position here, just trying to push on, but the Farah and the Ball just constantly pressuring them out. Yeah, so Little good pressure being the applied there. And that's a nice shot, and this is all of a sudden swung the other way. Absolutely, the two picks very quick coming in from Storybook Villain. They're going to very quickly clean this back up. Cobalt does go over to off the map and Kirby gets killed by Brita so they do equalize Brutal gets Liam and the rest is coming off coming out from crazy onto Liam's and it looks like it's gonna be a man advantage for Everfrost and it looks like they're actually gonna hold at least for the moment. Yeah that was pretty crazy there. Everfrost 
adding two player advantage very early on as you see them just getting come some of these staggered kills but they got two opening picks and then all of a sudden it was swapped back the other way trades came through and the respawns put um put the the opposition in favor but they're going to start aggressing now rally comes out and they will have five players alive so i don't think they should be engaging yet um absolutely not <laughs> yeah so you see they're kind of just sticking around i think it's kind of a wasted rally uh, with the yeah. armor changes but we'll have some ultimates nearing a nano blade and on the other side you see the barrage of the transcendence the transcendence can do a good job at keep, uh negating a lot of the nano blade while the barrage can put a lot of pressure on the tanks and possibly the backline depending on where he wants to go with this yeah and also we have seen the tracer picks off from both teams in favor of a mccree so bit of a difference here cobalt going in with the dive gets flashed gets stunned gets all sorts of things transcendence comes out for the nanoblade but not before logan goes down brutal channeling that high noon kirby finds blackstroke and logan with the blade res comes out onto crazy to logan but already a man advantage for storybook villains and they are actually going to be able to flip this point here that's kind of a poor uh, transcendence in all honesty they waited um, they saw the blade come out then they um, they popped it immediately, but then they kind of just stood there. They didn't go to the players that were being dived by Kirby, which allowed uh, them to take down Logan really early on. But um, they did not use any ultimates. So they still, uh, well, they used the Mercy ult, but you know. <laughs> Everfrost still have a war chest of ultimates coming into this fight. And if they can use them correctly, this could be very beneficial. Yes, yeah, Everfrost now on that 99% only needs to win one fight. And they're just going to be trying to win that one decisive fa fight. As you mentioned, they do have that war chest of ults, but that pick onto Blackstroke isn't going to be helping. The res is instantly going to come out to the crazy mage, but the grab comes out and the bomb gets cobalt. But Brita can't get into Mac. Brutal takes him down. He takes down Liam. Two picks for the side of Storybook Villains. And it looks like Everfrost is just going to be backing out for now, not wanting to take the fight without, without their D.Va. Yeah, so it was looking good. The Diva Bomb managed to get some good value. They got two picks very early on, but the Graviton Surge from Daiko Path was very good. Is this a sleep on the side? Wrecking Ball could and go down because it's any will. Uh, Blackstroke's still channeling that High Noon, however. Don't. Just trying to zone out that space. There's a duel on point. Logan and Kirby just trying to get each other, but both are going to back off from now. The Mercy comes over to Logan, so Kirby can't take that fight. But however, the... The, t uh, the team of Everfrost got split, and they are going to get the flip, but Everfrost is going to be able to go back and contest it. Crazy Mage got a kill there, and he is going to get the rage, so it's so it's a winnable fight for either team. The Wisp blows down to Logan, but Echo gets breed up. Blade is going to come out from Kirby Transcendence to match it from Liam. It looked... The blade gets cr Lo Kirby gets crazy mage. Brutal gets Logan. Kirby is gonna get Blackstroke. Kirby goes down to the mines, but it looks like a very scrappy fight so far. Wrecking Ball still on the point. Somehow gets an Echo Force, but it looks like Everfrost is going to be able to hold. They do have the main advantage. Brita is alone on point. He's going to get taken down, and Everfrost is going to be able to hold at least, or er, Storybook Villains is going to be able to hold at least just for the moment. Yeah, Storybook Villains, <clears throat> a very back and forth fight, but it really came down to Kirby Bro when this Genji picked out. I was kind of criticizing earlier, actually, finding, uh, being able to get some value. The Transcendence, which is their big ability to counter Everfrost, this has just not been working out. Uh, they've been playing too split to get max bio the Transcendence. Yeah, the High Noon comes out from Brutal, but doesn't get anything Brita there with the D-Matrix to deny that damage. Rally is out from Storybook Villains, however, so they are going to have the sustain, but Cobalt dies through it. Kirby goes down, Grab is out from Daiko Pass to try and secure some kills, and it does. Liam goes down, and Brita loses mech, but Echo Force go down. Blackstroke now channeling that High Noon, trying to find something else, but Wisp goes down. In the meantime, main advantage here for, uh, for Everfrost. Cobalt on that Wrecking Ball for that stall, but Wrecking Ball drops his own mines on point. One, it's just Kirby on the point, and he's gonna go down to the mines and Everfrost taking this first map of Lee Jang Tower 99 to 100. I think, uh, even though it was super close, I think he came the came down to a, in some ways, a compositional difference. Um, the Wrecking Ball, when you don't, if they had run the Symmetra earlier, Storybook Villains, I think they could have got a bit. Uh, better percentage bit early on and maybe have been able to take in this if they had gone that bit extra percentage early on but instead to go with this 
kind of uh, Apex style dive. And it just doesn't work out. But here on this next point, they're going to stick onto this. Kirby bro on the Genji. I don't think it's the best pick in the current meta, but he's managed to make it work pretty well in the last point. Yeah, it did work for him. Able to do. Yeah, it did work for him. He got a lot of kills with the blades, but Everfrost sticking to their guns, sticking with the McCree, the Fara, and this is a good Fara points from what we've seen. Breaking Ball trying to get that boot, but Storybook Villains have learned the lesson. They're going to be cautious and not let him get that, so he's just going to back off for now. Everfrost taking the early position on point, however. Cobalt almost gets knocked off, but not quite. And they're just getting, trying to poke in, trying to get in. Ever, however, the comp of Everfrost just preventing them now. Cobalt going in, gets flashbang, but the bubble's there to save him. He's going to be able to live, goes very low, but and he is taken down by Wrecking Ball on the chase. Kirby is alone on the point, but he does make manage to take over Breeders' Map, but Wrecking Ball gets him with the fireball. Two, one man advantage here for forever for us. Storybook Villain still holding this ground in this little room for now, but they aren't going to be able to fight this. Yeah, they uh, are kind of hot here. Could, could go down if all doesn't go well, but the team has recovered, so we should be seeing a recontest. Absolutely. Kirby in the back line. 1v1ing Liam is going to take him down. And Daiko gets Breeda's mech. Daiko gets the baby. And Brutal gets Blackstroke. Wrecking Ball does trade out Kirby, but it doesn't look like it's going to matter as he get, gets rezzed right back up by Wisp. And the flip comes in for Storybook Villains. Yeah, Storybook. <laughs> yeah, Storybook Villains kind of just stayed around this room. A situation that could have cost them heavily, but it was kind of some. Uh, Everfrost just didn't do much about them and allowed the team to get the respawns, come on through, and collapse on the split Everfrost, which has been a reoccurring issue. They failed to get by uh, the Transcendence because they've been split. It opened up opportunities for this Nano Blade to work because they've been split. As There's a Nano Blade and the Transcendence comes out from. Low Liam, and this time it's a bit more effective. The Valk also out from crazy. Lots of ults getting popped. Brutal with the two man dead eye. But Logan answers back Supports. with a barrage kill and a normal kill of his own. No mercy reses for both teams as Wisp goes down. Blackstroke getting that flashbang onto Echo Force takes him down with the with the hammer. Daiko gets Breeders Mech, however, and gets the baby. So it's so Everfrost Storybook Villains has a chance. Cobalt and Kirby are on the point, but it's a but it is now a 2v2 as Blackstroke goes down to Kirby, the Wrecking Ball, Logan on the point now. Crazy Mage joins and respawns are coming in from both teams. Cobalt with the Primal trying to just keep his team alive. Logan goes down, but so does Brutal. It's trades from both sides. Ever However, Storybook Villains does have point control, so this fight is, the longer this fight goes on, the better it is for them. And they are going to be winning this fight at the moment. Cobalt is going to go down to the flashbang from Blackstroke, but it doesn't look like it's going to matter. And Storybook Villains is going to hold, at least for now. Yeah, storybook villains in this very long uh, fight are now in last fight territory. And the reason they were able to hold on to that for so long is the high noon come out uh, from Brutal and it managed to pick up both supports. So even though the fight went on for another solid 20 seconds after that, the supports uh, kind of gave them a good period where they could allow for their response to come back through before the Everfrost did because of the fact that uh, storybook villains kind of lost a couple players earlier on the fight, but this is very Rita much- eats the grab! Daiko kind of walked in and chucked it in there, but it's not gonna matter as Kirby with the blade already gets three bomb out from Brita, but it gets two! If there's still a fighting you chance for either team, Brita Bru 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 gets brutal without the mech in baby form. He's gonna get back into that. Wrecking Ball gets Cobalt <laughs> with the mines. This is crazy! <laughs> Daiko has a load on point trying to just- No, Wisp goes off the map! <laughs> It's just Daiko on point now, he's gonna be trying to recontest, but he gets Logan, but it doesn't look like it's gonna matter, and it looks like Everfrost retakes and keeps his round alive. Can you ever sing a Diva hard carry? Oh my word, eats the Graviton Surge early on. Two players still go down though, because of some phenomenal Genji work coming out from Kirby, bro. But that doesn't matter. Diva Bomb picks up two, and then if baby Diva wins a 1v1 against the McCree. I mean, how crazy is that? And then he gets back into the back, picks up a quad, and it allows his team to flip over. That is some phenomenal work there by Brita. In what has been a very scrappy match so far, they've managed to put him over the line. Absolutely. You can't ask for much more than that. And Wisp goes down from the dive from Wrecking Ball. And Logan Brutal gets taken down by his counterpart. And it looks like it's already a man disadvantage for Storybook Villains. The Nano did come out onto Cobalt, but didn't get much value. And he's just going to get shredded and taken down. 
And it looks like Everfrost is going to be holding this point for now, building up that percentage, and it looks like we are going to be going into final fight territory here. Yeah, final fight territory, like you mentioned, uh, this is a very interesting fight coming up. Not a lot of uh, ultimate advantages to either side. Very similar in what they have, but this aggressive push from Everfrost should be able to catch somebody out. Yep, Brutal goes down, he gets isolated and taken down, but Echo Force takes down Blackstroke in the meantime. Logan with the Pulse Bomb does find Echo Force, however, the Blade out from Kirby. It's been a difference maker, maker before, can it be now? He gets one, he gets two, he gets... He's gonna take down the mech, he gets the kills he needs, it looks like Wrecking Ball trying to stall it on point, almost has those mines, however it's a 4v1, 5v1, not one he's likely to win, the Reapers out from Bruno to try and hold this point, Everfrost has to touch this point, and they're not gonna be able to, and we will go to round 3. Third round here, uh, like you mentioned, coming up on the docket, we're gonna be heading over to the control center now, but that point, was so back and forth. I mean, that could have been anybody's, uh, anybody could have won that. We saw some incredible plays from both sides, but it came down to the fact that Kirby brought this Genji, not an answer from. The only fight they really did was, um, they, they played super group together. Like you, honestly, it's gonna sound strange, but you should be doing it against this blade with the comp they were running. It allows That's the transcendence to entirely counter it. And they can't do anything about it. You do give over map control and some other stuff, but I think it is the better decision. Here, that we're gonna see some junk draft from both sides. One side, though, is gonna have the symmetrical, while the other has the meg. Yeah, a bit of an interesting here, though. However, Control Center always famous, always has been a brawl heavy map, so no surprises there. Breaking Ball and Cobalt just kind of getting in their, each other's faces, swinging along. Cobalt getting the better of the duel, however, as the lamps comes out from Echo Force to try and keep his team alive. Brutal on that Reaper tries to go in and gets forced out by every cooldown in the game. And Everfrost looks like they're going to be taking the position on point first. However, Storybook Villains wants to take that fight. The, the cap is going to, however, come out from Everfrost, but Storybook Villains doesn't want that to happen. Gets onto point, Cobalt trying to stall it out, but Blackstroke goes down to Brutal in the back line. However, Blackstroke kind of on his own. Mike. He is going to be able to Wraith out. Wrecking Ball goes down to Kirby's Concussion Mine, and it's a two-man advantage for, for Storybook Villains, and they're just going to be able to take the first cap and prevent Everfrost from getting it themselves. Yeah, Everfrost were on the back foot the entire time. Storybook Villains put a lot of pressure onto them. It forced them to kind of back up onto the point, burn a lot of resources to stay alive, and then uh, Storybook Villains waited it out and then collapsed at the perfect opportunity, and now they have a lot of ultimates coming into the this next fight. Absolutely. And the tire coming out from Kirby very early, trying to catch someone here. It's over the top, it's going in, and it gets taken down by Logan. So, no value there, but it did create a bit of a time. Ampl ampl amplification Matrix out from Echo doesn't find any value. And the, and the Sound Bear comes out from Crazy. Cobalt goes down to Logan. Brutal takes down Liam, however. Wrecking Ball already went down to Echo first in force earlier. Once again, still anyone's fight, but... With the Death Blossom coming out, getting three, a massive one from Bruno, it looks like Storybook Villains holding for now. Yeah, Storybook Villains there, uh, they, that should have been a lot cleaner than it really was, but it came, the reason it wasn't in a lot of ways is because Crazy Mage, the very nice sound bearer which delayed this in, uh, and allowed them to get a lot of time, and then it, the Death Blossom, uh, managed to clean it up and put them in it. And allowed storybook villains to go over the line in a fight they shouldn't have won in all honesty but blackstruck with a nice opening pick really nice tire there grab comes out tired not tire sound barrier grab a lot of things coming out and no kills for either team however man advantage forever frost and they're gonna get the flip coalescence is coming out from liam to support his team but wrecking ball gets taken down by cobalt spin so it's a 5v5 and with brutal coming back for storybook villains it looks like it's gonna be a 65 real soon Echo Force, however, does go down to Crazy crazy Mage, so he is going to be equalizing it. Blackstroke is very low, but no one's going to be able to take him down. But Logan is going to go, go down to Cobalt Swings. Wrecking Ball on point, just trying to swing away, trying to get that kill. And he is going to find the kill onto Cobalt. Once again, a very back-and-forth fight. However, as I say, that Blackstroke and Brita both get taken down. Wrecking Ball just... Alone on point with his supports, but he's gonna get taken down. Taken down. Liam just trying to stall, and now Crazy Mage stalling, but it's not gonna be enough. And there, the flip is gonna come over for Storybook Villains. Yeah, we're nearing last fight territory here, as as they're gonna start moving up very aggressive. Ant Matrix does get thrown on down. As one of their uh, five ultimates, they will have to work with. On the other side, you really only have the Blizzard and the Shatter, though. 
uh, one of these needs to come up big if they want to try to make something happen. If Frida can eat this, uh, not Frida, excuse me, but if they could kind of negate this Blizzard, this could be disastrous. Ram comes out and Blizzard comes out, however, but Kirby already found Blackstroke with the tire. Echo forces Lamp gets taken down, but not before but not before Brutal goes down to Liam. 5v5 fight here. Both Reinhardt swinging all the way on point. Beat coming out from Wisp, keeping his team up, keeping his team alive. Brutal is going to have this blossom. Daiko almost with the grab. Counter beat comes out from Crazy Mage. And now here's the grab from Daiko. Doesn't get eaten, and Wrecking Ball is gonna go down, but so does Echo Force. Kirby finds Crazy Mage. Bomb coming out from Brita. Can it find anything? No, it can't. Death Blossom comes out for Brutal, but it can't find any value, and he gets taken down for back and forth fight. Everfrost has to win this if they want to keep themselves in this game, and it, it's looking possible for Brita, Brita gets taken on a mech, Shatter. Liam gets solo shattered. It's just Logan on point, but Cobalt goes down. High noon channeled from Blackstroke, trying to find something. Daiko just trying to hide. He is gonna get Brita in the Baby Diva form, though, so that's a minute. So now Shatter comes out, it gets two Echo Force and Daiko, but no kills coming in, and Brutal gets Blackstroke. Tire comes out from Kirby after getting Wrecking Ball. Man Advantage looking, it's looking good here for Stormbook Villains, and they're gonna take round one of Li Zhang Tower. Ooh, yeah, map one goes to way of Storybook Villains in spectacular fashion. Uh, 100 to 99s on both maps, and 100 to 40 in the uh, final one. But it's kind of disappointing there. Uh, forever for us. They, Absolutely. they, uh, they're one point that they end up, that the one point on this map where, uh, this is kind of just a bad map for them, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. You have one point, you have two points where they could make this work, make the Wrecking Ball, which is what they're obviously most comfortable on work. But there's, uh, but you have uh, two of the points where it's not necessarily the best. You have that one where you can see the, where you can see a, like a monkey come out. And you have that APAC dive, which did end up taking that point. And then you have the other one, Control Center, where you, all you see is Brawl. And Everfrost obviously are not too comfortable on Brawl. Um, Absolutely. We, we, Wrecking Ball didn't look too comfortable. He was getting outdueled by Cobalt a lot there. And it is going to be Everfrost map pick here going into map two. It is going to be Escort Rialto, Route 66, and Watchpoint and Gibraltar up for, up for a pick here. And what do you think is Everfrost's best option coming in? Yeah, Everfrost, like you mentioned, uh, have a kind of good group of <clears throat> maps they could select for, but I think you you actually, I think you should be going with uh, Route 66. You look at Rialto, this is a uh, place where not where running those type of comps uh, is not necessarily the best. They will be picking Rialto though, but... So my point is kind of mute. Um, Rialto <laughs> is a comp where you can make the Wrecking Ball work, but I think you could do a bit more on Route 66. Um, and then Watchpoint is just that's a comp that's a place where you run like some form of APAC dive no matter what. Absolutely. We've seen a lot of Rialto, however, so not a lot of really surprising things there. The map, we've seen a lot of teams pick the same map, and that's the ones they've practiced. Everfrost, however, looking much more comfortable on the wrecking ball, however, storybook villains pulling out a lot of different things. Cobalt the sticky going to every main tank except the wrecking ball on the monkey and on the Reinhardt. And what do you make of those two different play styles yeah the uh the two different play styles of i think will be something that we see throughout this entire series um they will they are kind of the driving force on whichever team is managing to take the maps is depending on which play style is best suited for the point or the map so i'm just i'm interested to see what storybook villains up to go with uh because this Winston Zari is not the best for this map, and then Brawl as well is also not too good. So I wouldn't be surprised if they honestly get forced onto a Recu Ball. Yeah. And we are going to have a sub here, River Trash coming in for Crazy Mage. The, the supports a support sub here. And what do you make of that trade? Crazy Ma Crazy Mage on that main support role. However, we it is gonna be double flex support from Liam and River. So what do you think of this? Oh, uh, so this means that we're probably going to be seeing Bapsen. Uh Something <laughs> that we <laughs> haven't seen in a bit of time, but yeah, Bapsen is probably what's going to be on the table. Um, it's not bad, but I do think running a Mercy here would be the better alternative. Yeah, and we've seen a lot of different things from the support. We've seen Bap. We've, we saw Bap on the last map. We saw 
we did see the mercy coming out from Everfrost on the for the Fara, and we saw a lot of different things come out. So it's going to be very interesting to see how Rialto is played. It's been played in many different ways in the past matches, so I'm excited to see how this one goes. Yeah, uh, I am as well. Um, this will be a very. I think this should be a fun map to watch. Welcome. Absolutely, and it, it always is. Both of us, Rialto yeah, always have... delivers. Uh, uh, Rialto is absolutely a fun map to watch. It's got a lot of different points, and with how close the last map Lijiang Tower was, it's honestly anyone's game going into this. Yeah, it is. It is not anybody's game. Uh, both these teams are pretty evenly matched. But I am. I'm excited uh, to see yes. what these teams are able to cook up here. As absolutely. on the defensive side, this is. Interesting. We're gonna be seeing brawl. Hey, we're gonna be seeing a brawl cop with a Genji. This reminds me of Absolutely. when you would run. This reminds me of when you would would run goats, where it'd be uh, goats, except you replace the diva with the Genji. So, yeah, so it not, not something you see too often. But Kirby has been making this Genji work. He's been coming up big, and on the def on the attacking side, they can change whatever. But Logan on that Hanzo, we've seen him come up big before, and it looks like it's gonna actually be on a Zen here for the side of Everfrost. A bit of a variation, but not too surprising. As we move in here, Blackstroke on that Widow, just trying to find an opening pick. He's gonna look for it, not gonna find it. Looks I, like he wants to stay on it. It looks like he will see, so we are going to see some Widow play here, not something we've seen too often. As Wrecking Ball jumps on that high ground, on that Winston, now something we haven't seen him play. The Widow just on that flank angle, trying to find something. Yeah, not able to get anything this he's forced to back off. Uh, it's kind of it enough, like, like it's there for Dragon Dragon Village for speed boosting into their back. <laughs> to Everfrost's back line. Brita takes down Brutal, but the both supports Ooh. for Everfrost are already down. However, Storybook Villain's a little split here, but it looks like they are going to be able to re regroup. However, Brita's mech does go down. So a bit of a... They do take down supports, but a couple of their members get lost, and Brita now over to switches off just to get his mech back here. Yes, they're getting ready for a bit of a re-engage. The Widowmaker swap for Brutal alone. Uh, going in kind of aggressive as Wrecking Ball, there's a lot of pressure on him. He does manage to get out. The entire team is here now, so they will be getting ready for a re-engage. Absolutely, it's going to be a full 66 here. As we, we have a Widow Mirror, which isn't something we've seen a lot, but I am very excited to see Wrecking Ball just trying to force some space here. Jumps into a wall and goes back to his team. Logan and Kirby just trying to duel here. Logan's come up big on this Hanzo before. We'll see if we can do it again. Sights is going to come out from Brutal. First alt so far as Wrecking Ball gets antied. He can't go in. Kirby on that Widow and <gasps> Blackstroke on the boat is barely surviving and he gets taken down by Kirby finally. The Nano, however, still comes out onto Wrecking Ball. He's almost got that Primal, and he's gonna be able to get it here, be able to stay alive through the anti-Echo Flex. Just getting, getting pummeled in the corner. The Nano comes out onto Wisp, and it looks like it worked as uh, Storybook Villains collapse and win that fight. Yeah, Storybook Villains do manage to take it there. Uh, and uh, it really comes off of a great shatter there from Cobalt. Uh, they did get an opening pick, though, as... Black stroke. It's not in the best of games as the boot from Wisp will kind of force a bit of a delay there. But yeah, and wrecking ball over now to the wrecking ball as his name would suggest. Good. It's something. It's something we've seen him be a lot more comfortable on. So I am excited to see how this turns this this around for the side of Everfrost. Yes, the wrecking ball will go on to on to Kirby. Not find. However, can't really find much. He's just going to be rolling through as wrecking balls do. Yes, uh, Dink does come through, but the heal is there, but Brutal oh, alone. Goes Opening down, but Echo Force goes down, it's a trade on both sides, the beat comes out from Whisk, keeping his team alive, Wrecking Ball rolling through, trying to get something. Blackstroke, however, does have sights here, could pop it on his way back, and that's exactly what he does. Breeder just on this card, trying to make some space, but Wrecking Ball finds Brutal on his way back from spot. Grab comes out from Daiko, gets two, and now the blade out Kirby. from Kirby once... 
He's gonna oh. he's gonna save this again for his team. Get out of here! Absolutely huge. Wrecking Ball did invest the minefield at the end. He's still alive and he is actually still fighting this here, but it might be in vain. He's gonna get out, and it is gonna be another hold for Storybook villains. And now 30 seconds on the clock for Everfrost to try and make something happen. Yeah, not a lot of time left. And uh, Kirby Bros been putting a lot of work here with these blades. He's not gonna have one in this fight, but he's kind of looking for a bit of an off angle on the other side. The double support ultimates and the diva bombs all they got to work with it's gonna need to be some great play it's gonna be need to be a huge individual play from somebody absolutely but cobalt gets a bit too aggressive and gets taken down very early wrecking ball with the nano is gonna go in but brutal finds both supports as kirby finds blackstroke huge plays coming out from the dps for abs for storybook villain bomb comes out from brita and wrecking ball gets taken down by brutal wisp gets logan and it's just brita on cart you're trying to stall it out trying to make something happen but it's not gonna happen full hold liam trying to transcend his way back to point no way storybook villains full hold wow storybook villains what a performance there i mean this a lot of their holds were super close fights and then some individual popped off and it was and it was the exact same there in the last fight the blade comes out from kirby bro uh not the blade excuse me he dashes into the back line gets a gets a double kill but it's still a two for two trade and it's still and the ultimate at that point was um was not was in favor of everfrost but then out of nowhere brutal alone picks up a two headshots <laughs> in both of the supports turn completely turns the tide of the fight and yeah, puts the uh, storybook villains in a great place to take this map absolutely we've seen a lots of big plays coming out from both teams but the dps of storybook villains really taking this in wrecking ball on that wrecking ball to start it out not playing around with anything else however on the attacking side kirby sticking with this genji and blackstroke now onto that ash and logan on the echo we've seen them come up big before they're gonna have to come up big it's not out of the question for everfrost to full hold storybook villains with what's known as the fuller hold but it is going to be difficult here yeah fuller holds are a rare occurrence as especially with four minutes it's gonna gonna be tough but let's see what they're able to do composition yeah. on the defense is gonna be the comp i think they should have been around the entire time but on the attack same thing uh <laughs> pro comp well, it's not even a brawl anymore, it's just a Ryan's up. <laughs> brawl with the Widow Genji, I mean... It's, it's, it's brawl, but they're Genji taking brawl creative brawl. liberties. Yeah. Kirby getting dived on by Wrecking Ball, but he is going to be get, able to get out there, and it looks like the cart is going to stall at this corner, as it always does. But Blackstroke gets taken down early, however, River on that Mercy will most likely be able to get that res off, and, it, and it's going to be a still a full 66 fight, so still ever... Everfrost has a chance. The die tries to come on to Brutal, but it's not gonna happen. Rita gets anti and has to back out. Wrecking Ball going in. The payload already very close to that destination, as only 60 me 68 meters to go. But Brutal with the dive, the second try, second time is the charm, gets him, and it is going to be a man advantage here for Everfrost early on. However, Kirby going in very deep, most likely gonna get taken mm. down here by the likes of the entirety of Everfrost, and it's gonna be at least a hold for the moment here for Everfrost, and they have burned a minute off the timing. Yeah, they're forced to back out uh, for now. They do. Uh, they don't really have any ultimates either, as they shot there from Blackstroke. Yeah. Uh, stole it out for a bit longer, but no real ultimates here. Uh, only one that will be in this fight is the Merciel. Um, the blade, Nano Blade is the closest thing for the side of Storybook Villains, and then I think if they can build this up, they should. If they can build up before the Transcendence is there, this is practically a free fight when impossibly map one. Absolutely, and Kirby and Echo already has it, so they're most likely going to be going real soon. And with every time Kirby has had a blade, he has come up big three or more kills every single time. And there it is, the blade comes out, the valve comes out, but Ooh. River gets taken down instantly, Logan goes down to the blade too. All Get out of down, here. the bomb is out, well, Kirby! It's four kills already. It looks like Doom here for Everfrost. Mines out from Wrecking Ball, but it's not gonna do much. Rita gets taken down by Cobalt. The cart moving closer and closer to that yellow box of victory. Somebody's gonna have to touch River Trash very close, but it's Logan who gets the touch, but he's gonna get slept, gets taken down, and that's a quick map win for Storybook Villains. 
yeah, very different from what we saw in map one. Uh, this was not close at all. Storybook villains, full holds, and then they understand what they need to do. They need to get that nanoblade before the transcendence, uh, like I was mentioning earlier. And they do it, and, like, look at this. Just a phenomenal blade manages to pick up four kills in air. I mean, get out of here. That's some phenomenal work. And then just cleans up with two at the end. This was some incredible stuff there from Kirby Bro at the very end. And he did this multiple times. I was kind of trashing the Genji pick on map one. He's making me eat my words. He has taken Absolutely. over this game. I think there's <clears throat> three here. I would say there's like three heroes in Overwatch. Well, I would say, th yeah, three heroes in Overwatch. Where if you play them to perfection, like if, if you're somebody who's just completely on that day, you can dominate games. And I would tend to think that's probably like the Tracer, the Widow, and the Genji. Uh, Widow, you can't stop a Widow from just clicking your head. That's just obvious. Yeah. Uh, Tracer, if, if the Tracer is on point that day and is dodging, uh, dodging the stuns and all that other stuff, you can do some really good work. And then on the Genji, you could just do what Kirby Bro's doing. I mean, that's just, that's insane. Yeah. Absolutely. Every single fight, Kirby has had that blade, has popped that blade. I'm pretty sure storybook villains have won even when Everfrost has that transcendence, even when they've had the Valkyrie on top of the transcendence. So it's really yeah. gonna it's really gonna be up to Everfrost here to be to try and counter that blade to try and shut it down and to try to take this third map because we are going to be going into this map three here. It is going to be hybrid, Eichenwald, Blizzard World, or Holly or Hollywood, and Everfrost has to take this map, or they're going to be losing this Series 3-0, no matter how close that first map was. Yeah. And, and, and with this third map being hybrid, Eichenwald, Blizzard World, Hollywood, we've seen a lot of Blizzard, Blizzard World, we've seen a bit of Eichenwald, not too much, and what do you think is the pick here for Everfrost? Um, I'm not, I'm not too sure. Um, normally you would just say, it's King's Row, but King's Row. No, not in the uh, pool. Not in the pool. Uh, so this opens it's opens up like we've seen this season, a lot of variance in the map selections. And so, uh, I think for what Everfrost, the ver the ver the small amount of success they've had is, like we were talking about earlier, the situation where Wrecking Ball is supreme. They picked a map where Wrecking Ball was supreme and got dominated by a Genji. <clears throat> not much you can do there. Um, you kind of just have to Pick a pick another map where that's the case. Probably Eichenwald. Uh, I can actually all three. Um, any any of them would work. So I I don't think there's a big. I think if they <clears throat> pick anything except uh, everything except probably Hollywood, they should be all good. Uh, absolutely, we have not seen Hollywood. So, uh, that much so and as we are we are going to be going into a quick break here for uh for storybook villains versus everfrost 2-0 storybook villains up everfrost has to take this map three and we'll be right back
Hello everyone, welcome back to our match between Storybook Villains and Everfrost. Ever Storybook Villains up 2-0 in the stories with a commanding full hold on Rialto. Everfrost needing to take the reverse sweep if they want to take this series. This third map is going to be hybrid and Hollywood is the pick coming on from Everfrost. And we did see some substitutions and some interesting things. Logan is going to be on the tank, and Keondrick came in from Brita, but he is going to be on that DPS role, and what do you make of this, Joe? I mean, I'm not sure. I think uh, Keondre is a capable McCree, like we were talking about in the break. <clears throat> um, so I think that we could see... Uh, Bru I think uh, Keondre could be get some work done on the McCree. So... Um, I hope that's what he goes with there. And then Logan on the tank, this screams to me they want to run Hog's ball. Because I think Recky Ball, I pray to God he plays the ball. Uh, Recky Ball is, by anybody who has two brain cells, the best <laughs> tank in the game. Uh, and if you think otherwise, I, 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 I'm struggling to see your, I'm struggling to see why you would think that. Because he provides so much value. And then Recky Ball has been playing very well, believe it or not, on the racking ball. But <laughs> yeah, so I think that should be what we see. I think we will see Hogball, uh, possibly Torb, 
Uh, Hollywood <laughs> is a well-known Torb map. Uh, I think it's the only map in the game where Torb is still a viable pick, but we'll see. We'll, <laughs> we will see. Yeah, and Hollywood, not a map we see too often in Owlet or in a lot any places for that matter so far. So I'm very excited to see how this plays out now with Ready. Everfrost on the attack. They can adjust whenever, and it looked woken on the Zarya, but they are an attack, so we'll see what happens. However, on the defense, just the standard out from SVV Kirby on that Genji has saved his team before. Let's see if he can close the series out right now. And I ever frost on that Zarya on that Brigitte Zenyatta Ash Tracer. Yeah, so the Ash Tracer. Keontre on the Tracer. I guess I was wrong. I am <laughs> kind of disappointed. I think the Ash Tracer is not the play. And then they're running Zarya. So we see DPS players move over to Zarya. It's normally the people who pick up the Zarya, so it's not too surprising. But I. Don't well, think. This is, wait, this is the uh, APAC cop. This was the, uh, not the APAC, the Chunk Duke Storybook villains, Storybook villains in the in the hotel. I ever frost doesn't see him. They're gonna get him. The huge anti day Kirby goes down, but it is ever frost already split. But they do sustain Logan. However, does go down. But <laughs> bit of an interesting play. Cobalt goes down. That might have backfired here for Storybook villains. They're gonna have to retreat to point. Keandre gets taken down by Brutal with a headshot. Of Pretty nice shot there. I don't particularly know what Brutal's doing here. Yes, he gets taken down as he does have a bit of an over aggression here. That was a very interesting play coming out from Storybook Villains hiding in the hotel. Yeah, and it may have cost. It's looking like they're gonna cost us. They're still down when players to Rika Chess comes through. Absolutely. The, and Everfrost already building up, almost got that first pick. Wrecking Ball just on that point. Just providing so much presence and Cobalt gets down, gets stunned up by that Brigitte and it looks like that move might have cost him. Ooh. Kirby trying to move over to the high ground does get Blackstroke in the process but two ticks already for Everfrost if, even if they come out with nothing and it doesn't look like Storybook Villains want to recontest. Kirby can't even get there in time. He's going to get taken down. A bit of a stagger there and Stur Everfrost with a quick statement cap. Yeah, quick, uh, quick nice cap there. There are a lot of, uh, I mean, a fair few ultimates coming out from both sides the animal blade very close which historically in this game has been a dumb fight win especially with that transcendence not there pulse bomb does not find anything but echo force is falling low um they do have a couple of ultimates ever frost do see how they're able to utilize them as cobalt goes down cobalt goes down high noon channeled from brutal gets a liam but blackstroke gets brutal in return played out from kirby can he turn this fight he gets one he gets two it's an even trade he gets three kirby once again saving the fight for his team what a surprise not, not, nothing too surprising. Kirby saving the fight for his team again, as he's done time and time again this game. And Brutal on the Soldier, once again, not something we've seen too often, but we've come to unex expect the unexpected with this game. Yeah, as uh, so you start to see storybook villains kind of going back, Brutal kills himself with the Helix, as Wrecking Ball was on top of him, he's going to go down, so that's a one-for-one one trade. And Blackstroke gets dove by Kirby. He's been so good on that Genji, I can't. Talk about him, talk about him enough, and that's another quick reset here for Everfrost. Yeah, Everfrost forced to reset. Brutal is going to move over onto the Somber now, so they will be running. I don't. I think you should be running the uh, Winston if you're going to be running this uh, yes. typical. But they're making it work, so I uh, probably should stop complaining. But on the other <laughs> side, we see double. We're going to see all six ultimates coming out. Um, Absolutely, I'm probably going to be a major rally, and then you could do like a graviton pulse pop. And then, uh, if the fight's still not win, you can use the mines to zone them off. Uh, and then the transcendence at the very end, the black stroke. The black stroke goes down, and Everfrost is most likely just gonna wait for black stroke to go back. Kirby buying some more time with his team. Five minute time bank already down to three minutes, two minutes already being burnt down. Blackstroke now switches over to the McCree, forgoes the Bob, which is an interesting decision, but he is gonna go down. Uh, Brutal trying to farm up that EMP is gonna, get, however, get Liam in the process. So just more time bought for Storybook Villain might be a mistake here from Everfrost deciding to not back out here. Yeah, Everfrost are kind of playing it back passive, waiting for everybody to come back. They have a lot of ultimates to work with as, uh, still. 
The only one they're missing is the Bob because they have made the swap over onto the McCree. On the other side, they are nearing five ultimates, one of which being the Nano Blade, which has been very deadly. Absolutely, and that time bad from the Blade comes out, Grab comes out, Transcendence comes out, Kirby just got everything thrown at him. That was like four ults just for Kirby, but it looks like it is gonna get through pay off two picks already for Everfrost, Echo Force, and Kirby both go down, but Brutal in the backlight almost takes down almost takes down someone, but he isn't gonna get the picks and Everfrost gonna be marching into point B Wisp on that star, trying to buy more time for his team and a recontest may have been possible, but not quite. Logan gets slept up, Kirby trying to confirm the kill, but it's not gonna happen. Split spawns here for Cobalt's but it does look like he is going to get over to his team safely. Blackstroke yeah. gets a stun onto Kirby, a stagger, and that's going to be a one fight for Everfrost. Yeah, Everfrost managed to cap up and start moving the curve forward, and a lot of ultimates to work with. This is a Early very impressive P, and it's going to cost and him his life. That is a yeah, waste of MP. Absolutely. They got everyone so low, but Storybook Villains was What's not bad? in a position to follow up, Daiko goes down to the high noon, bit of a miscommunication there on that EMP for Storybook Villains, and they haven't been able to take a fight for this entirety of second point, however, Keandre slept, but he is gonna manage to survive, they they weren't able to confirm the kill, mistakes rolling in left and right for Storybook Villains. Uh, yeah, this is sloppy play coming out from them. They however, do River to does get one, though. Brutal gets take Brutal takes down River, so that's a pick in their favor. Logan gets stunned up, almost almost gets collapsed on, and he is gonna get taken down by Kirby. And Everfrost finally stopped, but not before moving the cart almost all the way. Blackstroke gets taken down by Kirby on the stagger. Yeah, I, this is this should not have happened for Everfrost. I mean, there was mistake after mistake after mistake from uh, storybook villains, but. Everfrost just kind of stood there and did nothing about it. They should have gone aggressive, taken advantage of it, and now they're going to be running into a Nano Blade. And the Nano Blade comes out historically very good. However, Transcendence out to stop him, and Cobalt goes down, going for the pin, thinking Kirby was going to get some kills, and this is the first time all game Kirby has managed to not execute River River Trash on that Brigitte with the rally, and the High Noon channeled from Brutal, and the sound barrier to keep him up, and Keandre is gonna go down. Kirby on that cart, stalling it out, managing to hold it for now, and Cobalt finally coming back on that Reinhardt, gonna be able to provide the point for the Kirby is very low, and he finally gets taken down by Logan. Cobalt, bit aggressive there, but River River gets done. Hot. Lots of ultimates coming out from both teams, but it looks like Storybook Villains gets two, well, but even though Blackstroke gets ever... Echo Force, Daiko goes down to Blackstroke, but it doesn't look like it's gonna matter. Everfrost still held, but Liam gets brutal, so bit staggered. A good amount of staggers coming out, but Stormbook villains do have the close spawns, but however, Everfrost going in trying to seize their advantage here. This feels like one very long two-minute fight. Uh, Wrecking Ball going in, uh, slamming onto Cobalt, however can't find anything, and Everfrost full at their full strength, Grab comes out from Logan, gets Daiko and Cobalt, Pulse comes in, but Daiko goes down to the mine, Brutal however finds Blackstroke, gets his counterpart, Nano all over out onto Cobalt, just working his way into the backline, however Brutal goes down to River Trash, Kirby gets Keandre, it's a massive blow, Cobalt just in that backline, he gets gets taken down, the over-aggressiveness costing him, Everfrost just inching this cart ever so close to the final point, River Trash so low, gets taken down, Wait. the point comes out from Kirby, Wrecking Ball goes down to Daiko Path, 10 seconds left in the time bank for Everfrost, they have to get a quick regroup and touch this cart, 5 seconds, Kirby goes down to Blackstroke, this is such an incredible scrappy fight, Blackstroke gets pinned by Cobalt, Cobalt with the slam, over time is triggered, however, the high new trigger, the high new channel by Brutal and Storybook Villains hold, but I, I don't know what just happened. Oh, this is. <laughs> this, I, I can. This reminds me of. Like, I don't know. I can feel. I, I can feel Sideshow running through my veins yelling Jerry. <laughs> it reminds me of. uh, This entire match just reminds me of that moment. I mean, it, it just. <laughs> it just. I can't say that on broadcast. Uh, it just feels like a cloud fiesta. It is... <laughs> it 
It is. I. They're so sloppy with everything they do. Yeah. Everything that's happened different. this map has been sloppy, bad, and one of these teams can take the map if they just decide to do a reset. Absolutely. And not waste ultimate. They can win this series, either of these teams. If, notice. Oh, so we're down three players. Let's not commit a DMP. Oh, we're down two players. Maybe we should reset. And instead, they stick around and they throw stuff at the fan, at the wall. Yeah, these, and hope these, something sticks. And these, nothing works. <laughs> ex, ex, uh, and then, okay, this is a completely separate point. Uh, Kirby was right next to that Mega at one point, and he just opted to not pick it up. He was at 10 health and just is like, no, nah, I'm not going to pick it up. And it goes down. But I digress. We're getting ready here. We're going to see uh, similar comps to what we've been seeing so far. I think exactly the same comps as we saw yep. last round. Yeah, and as ever, uh, Storybook Village tries to just walk in, Wrecking Ball tries to go and get stunned. However, it gets the bubble, is going to be able to survive. Keandre tries to go in for the dive on the honor. Wrecking Ball follows him up, and they are going to get Echo Force there. They've been so good at executing these Bar Tracer dives. I was talking about this with Misfit earlier in the season, and how good the Tracer Ball dives were going to be. And Bruto goes down to Wrecking Ball. Wrecking Ball on that Wrecking Ball has been so has been looking very good throughout the entirety of the series. Even when they, even on that last map, Rialto, he was looking very good, executing so well with his partner Keandre. And Everfrost wins that fight. Yeah, Everfrost do manage to get the hold there. No ultimates coming into the next fight. That was finally a claim reset. Who would have guessed? Didn't know they were possible. But <laughs> Dive is coming through. We're going to see an interesting rotation. So they're going to speed onto the high ground and then collapse onto the point. Absolutely. Wrecking Ball tries to go in and then gets body blocked by four people. River Crash on that Brigitte with the third person peak Frank to relate to his team what's happening. Keandre going in, somehow managing to live. The engage comes out on River Crash, but he gets a bit too aggressive. Blackstroke is getting all is probably gonna get caught out. High noon tra uh, channel from Bruto kills coming in for a storybook villain. Bruto just on that high ground finally cancels that high noon, gets out of it, and it looks like a cap is gonna be coming in for the side of storybook villains. Keandre just stalling it up, and he's gonna get taken down. That was a great rotation. They did something clean. Uh, they rotated it onto the high ground and it sped onto the point. That's a very nice rotation. Um, my favorite part about the game is seeing how teams decide to use the map geometry to their advantage, and that was a very nice rotate that allowed them to collapse onto the team as they're looking to collapse onto Everfrost once again. Calvo Wisp gets a bit too aggressive, but kills come out from Daiko and Koba onto Blackstroke and River, respectively. And it, it's kind of, and Storybook villains punish, use their aggression, get super aggressive, and manage to find picks onto the side of Everfrost, and Everfrost already getting pushed back, much like Storybook villains did on point three. Yeah, they got caught off guard there. You could tell they did not expect to be pushed that aggressive from the angle, and then it uh, cost them the fight as the card is moving forward slowly. We do see another Nano Blade coming up, but there's a transcendent. There it now. is! Transcendence comes out. Liam managing to keeping his managed to keep his team around for now. Cobalt once again in the back line. We've seen this time and time again. It's worked when Kirby's gotten kills, but whenever Frost has been able to take him down. When Cobalt pins in, he just ends up beating. River Trash gets taken down by Brutal. But it's still a mid advantage here for Storybook, for Everfrost. But as I say, that Storybook villain's answers back. Wisp goes down to Blackstroke now on that Ash. Logan almost has that grab here. So if the fight gets messy, he is, is going to have that. Cobalt is now back. So the mid advantage here for Storybook villains, and especially with Blackstroke going down to Kirby, showing that Genji. Shatter comes out, gets River, but no follow up coming in. Bit of a wasted ultimate there. River just in that swing battle, but Wrecking Ball, Liam goes down. Rally comes out, bit of an interesting. They were down two, but also, also coming out from Keandre. Whisk goes down. Bit of a wasted ultimate there from Everfrost and Storybook villains marching into the final point with four minutes and 30 seconds and there is a golden box of victory and Everfrost has to hold this for 4 minutes and 20 seconds if they want to stay in the series. Yeah, that was a wasted ultimate. Wasted the grab, wasted the pulse bomb, but on the other side, Storybook villains also wasted their own grab and charge. They had already won the fight, still committed it anyways. Uh, we will have a nano boost, but no blade for the side of Storybook villains. On the other side, only the uh, Wrecky Ball mines will be on the table. But he gets oh, something taken down. He gets so not even in midair. Huge sleep there from Echo Force tonight. 
they're, that's gonna spell so much free cart progress here for this tied up storybook build. It's that golden box of victory, ever so close for for them. Ever Frost fighting for their lives. High new channel by Brutal Wrecking Ball might get taken down here, but the bubble out just in time to save it. Echo Force getting harassed on Carpo without Wrecking Ball. Keandre gets taken down by Brutal. Sound Barrier comes out from Wisp and Brutal gets Liam and Keandre. This is disaster for Everfrost, but Logan and Wrecking Ball get their kills. Blade comes out from Kirby. Cobalt gets Logan. Cobalt gets Blackstroke, but Wrecking Ball gets Brutal. It's back and forth. It's anyone's fight. Bob is on card. He's. They, they woke the ball, but it didn't matter. He was on card. He was contesting. Kirby gets Echo Force. The Everfrost is stabilizing for now. And they are gonna get the hold at least for the moment. Three minutes still on the car, on the on the time bank. However, four storybook villains. They 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 woke the bomb. I mean, Kirby just shot up the bomb, woke it immediately after it got slept with, caused the Echo Force to go down. Don't think they would have won the fight, but it really is just a, it's just you painful see to see. Absolutely. However, Shadow onto both tanks, but Cobalt gets stunned out. The Transcendence out as he didn't have to use it for the blade last time. High Noon Channel from Brutal gets Black Stroke and Cobalt isolating River Trash, but the bubble is going to be able to save him. However, Kirby gets taken down by Liam. Really good play from the Zen here to take that down. Keandre in with the Pulse Bomb. Doesn't get, doesn't get anything, but does take down Cobalt. The cart moving ever so slightly in, but however, Everfrost is wise. They are going to contest and they are going to hold for another fight almost c9 but they are they are going to hold yeah into the next fight now graviton searches for both sides the deciding factor will be how the two support ultimates in this fight are used the nano boost <coughs> built, uh, being built up very close there by sbv but on the other side the rally should be used to initiate Absolutely, Grab comes out onto Wrecking Ball, takes him down immediately. This is a very big ultimate. Logan hiding with his own grab. He gets it. No pulse bomb, however. No follow up comes through, and they are going to be able to live. The Nano came out onto Cobalt. Cobalt, however, missed the pin oh, onto no. Logan, and Daiku gets taken down in the meantime. Big anti nade, however, onto two members, and but they're not going to be able to follow up. Brutal gets Gundry, however, but Wrecking Ball is back, causing chaos in that backline. Echo Force forced to take the 1v1, not one favorable for the Ana. Brutal going to get staggered out. And once again, a hold here for Everfrost. Uh, SBV win this fight if Brutal uh, had not whiffed so hard. He ends up bringing, well, it wasn't really a whiff, but he brings Keandre down to one health. And he chases after that Tracer the entire fight. But if he gets that pick right at the start when he has the opportunity, he can push back in with the rest of his team and create a 5v6 situation. But instead, he doesn't get it, and the rest of his team suffers. Yeah, absolutely. A huge pile driver out from Wrecking Ball getting. Getting that minefield pulse bomb out from counter doesn't find anything and mi minefield out as we've seen. Sound Bear comes out from Wisp to counter that minefield. Cobalt getting harassed, but he is going to be able to keep his positioning for now. Still an even fight, but ults used for the side of Everfrost. But Kirby goes down to the pile driver. He had the blade. Slam comes out from Cobalt. Doesn't find anything, but Brutal gets Logan on the high noon. Cobalt once again feeding a bit with the pin. Pins the transcending Zenyatta and gets taken down. Wrecking Ball gets slept, but gets waken up, but gets taken down by Brutal with the damage. 30 seconds on the clock here for Storybook Villains. It's an even fight. Everfrost has to wait for their tanks to come back before they engage, but so does Storybook Villains. Cobalt now oh, on that Wrecking no. Ball, but, but Brutal gets taken down by Kion for a man advantage here for the side of Everfrost. But the grab, he, he, he almost whisked the grab, but Kirby went back into it, and that prevented a lot of the damage, but it's not going to matter. Logan goes doing? down, but... Liam gets Liam takes down Kirby. Calder takes down Dykopath. Main advantage here for Everfrost. Brutal on that tracer That's trying it. to get to the point, but Cobalt is stalling, however, for now. Still a chance, but Brutal alone on point, alone and scared. He is gonna get taken down by the head from, from Liam. Really good coordination on the side of SVB for stalling this out, but they don't have a lot of steam. The minefield out. The touch barely comes out, but Kirby gets stuck. Really nice stick there. Dyko on that. Divac just gets taken down. Echo Force. Not much he can do on that Ana and Everfrost. Staying in the series takes map three and on Hollywood, and they are going to be going to a map four. That was an experience. <laughs> uh, Kirby for the third map in a row getting play of the game. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I think this uh, this map uh, Everfrost could have won this if they had just cleaned up a bit of their resets if they had reset in a couple of these situations a bit cleaner and a bit faster they would have that very last fight they would have had a 5v6 but in uh 
instead what happens is brutal alone for some reason stays <clears throat> stays aggressive costs him his life and then it creates a 5v5 situation and then the respawns of course for the defenders are faster so it goes back to a 6v5 but in the other way um and you can't expect kirby to carry every fight they've started to shut down a lot of his blades um with some <clears throat> it also helps because of how their comp is designed you kind of have you kind of have four of the players grouped up together you have the zarya the ash the uh, Zenyatta and the Brig kind of all group together and move as one unit, and then you have the Ball and the Tracer kind of off in the back uh, putting in some work. Absolutely. And it allows the Transcendence to keep most of the team alive, and that's what's been happening. The Transcendence has been very good, and it's kept the team alive and in the game. Uh, and so... Now it's time uh, to see what they're able to do uh, on, if I'm not mistaken, Volskaya Industries. Absolutely. Volskaya with is the map pick from SVV. And Everfrost be able to shut down Kirby's Blade. A lot of those win factors getting shut, win conditions getting shut down for SVV. Um, Ever, Everfrost shutting those down. Liam with the Transcendence and a bit sloppy play from SVV. Cobalt with a uh, with some interesting pins there. We saw him do this a lot in the first two maps as well, but K when Kirby doesn't get those kills that are four or five players just focusing you, putting down every cooldown, and it's not going to end well for you as the Reinhardt. Yeah, I. Uh, it appears, though, we will be heading to a quick break while I wait for all the teams to get ready. Um, but yeah, so we will be right back. Traveling to Volskaya Industries. 
Hello everyone, welcome back to our match between Storybook Villains and Everfrost. Storybook Villains are leading, but Everfrost ju just took the last map, Hollywood. The score is 2-1 in favor of Storybook Villains as we go into our map for Volskaya Industries. Crazy Mage did come in for the side of Everfrost on that support roll. So we, the sub coming in most likely... Ready. He is going to be on that Brigitte as Everfrost get ready to attack. For on the side of, um, excuse, <laughs> excuse me, um, oh, good. <laughs> I'm having a very good day. On the side of Storybook Villains, yes, the brutal on that brutal on that Sombra. We saw it last round. He didn't look great, but he is going to be looking for that redemption and Cobalt and Daiko on that Winston Zarya and Kirby, of course, on the Genji. Hello. Yeah, it's interesting to see what they are able to pull off here. I do like this comp, though, from Storybook Villains. I think this uh, Cyber Dive can be work, uh, can work to some great success if they do run it correctly, but there's always a chance they don't. On the attack, though, uh, slightly different comp only diff than what we saw last map. Only difference is the fact that they'll be running the Ash instead of the Bookery. Absolutely, and Brutal on that Sombra, I don't know if if um everfrost will see this coming and they are just going to be rotating in they I, and brutal just trying gets the hack onto wrecking ball most he gets the bubble however it's going to be able to stay alive and now everfrost is alerted of that somber's present presence now cobalt over to that high ground but wrecking ball with the counter dive uh, and he is going to get forced off Kirby trying to create some more space, but he is going to get lasered down, taking a lot of damage, wrecking and wrecking ball. And it looks like it's just a fight over this high ground. Brutal just trying to farm some EMP off wrecking ball. He goes very low. He is one, like 100 HP. And Blackstroke gets taken down by the nade in from Echo Force and two picks coming in as Crazy Mage also goes down. Wrecking ball goes down to the Sombra, and it looks like it's going to be a full reset here for Everfrost. That was like good idea from everfrost they kind of wrapped around the side try to take the high ground which is a very good uh rotation i think that's the correct way to approach this situation there but then they just stood there they didn't they didn't take the aggression they needed um, and then it allowed well, it allowed uh, storybook villains to collapse onto them in that situation instead of instead of it being the other way around. What should have happened is Everfrost should have dove out of that room, chosen target, gone the pick, but instead they sat around a bit too long. Uh, SPV did manage to capitalize. Absolutely, and with the Sombra pick here, Wrecking Ball can't play as aggressive as he is in danger of getting those hacks, and a lot of staggers came out for the side of Storybook Villains in that fight, so we're already down to 2 minutes and 10 seconds on the clock. Everfrost trying a bit of a different rotation here. As we, as they are going to be going up that right side of that tower, the blade comes out. However, from Kirby, it's been good so far. Is it going to be good? No transcendence available from Lee, but he gets taken out by that dynamite. Very good focus fire here from the side of Everfrost, but it doesn't look like it's going to be enough. Logan and Liam both get taken down by Brutal, and it looks like Everfrost once again is going to be taking their reset. This is looking much cleaner from Storybook Villains there. It is. Yeah, they are being enabled by a bit of a hesitation coming out from Everfrost. But storybook villains are choosing one area of the map, collapsing on that area, and then getting team wipes off the back of that. Absolutely. And the MP now coming out, and Liam immediately goes down. That Zen reduced to, to 50 health as it comes in. Kirby gets two of his own. Logan just. Wrecking Ball just trying to get out here. Both tanks are going to get out on the side of. Everfrost, and they are going to have a treasure vault of ultimate tower going into this next fight. Yeah, uh, a lot of ultimate six to work with. You, if I'm that, your game plan for this fight, engage with your ally, throw on the pulse bomb, try to get a pick, use the gravitational search, have some follow up, use the mines to zone them off, and then the transcendence to counter this grab that just been thrown out. However, huge anti huge. comes in from Echo Flex. Black Strokes can't do anything. However, pulls out onto Cobalt and it does find him. The anti was big, but no follow up came out from Storybook Villains. Already five ults used out from Everfrost, and it looks like it pays off. Pressing Q five times apparently works very well, and it looks like Everfrost most likely will be taking this first point. Yeah, they should have engaged that fight in a bit of a different way. The Graviton Surge kind of fluffed their. Uh, Graviton Surge and the anti nade caused forced them to take it a bit differently, but it was good ad uh, adaptation on the fly there. They managed to throw in their ultimates in some good situations. Uh, the Bob wasn't really necessary all that much, but 
It's gonna, it should be okay. No ultimates for SBV, only ultimate for the sun ever for us, though, is gonna be the mine. Um, if they get some good, I wonder if you just go in with the dry fight, though, try to build ults for the next one. Absolutely, but Storybook Villains does not have that luxury. Wrecking Ball almost gets hacked, but he managed to cancel it and stay alive at least for the time being. Rolls through back to his team, and Keandre on that back line trying to get Echo trying to get Echo Force, however, not finding it. However, the dive coming in from Wrecking Ball, and he drops the mines on point, and the cap starting to build up Everfrost, the first tick already gone. Gotten, but Keandre goes down. However, Kirby, the Genji, get it, gets taken down by Logan. Now Everfrost trying to find the pick. But Storybook Villains trying to stabilize, but Wisp goes down to a headshot from Blackstroke, and Wrecking Ball gets taken down by Dykopath. However, trades fall, favoring the defender on these two CP maps. Everfrost knowing that is going to back out as more of their members gets taken down. It's going to be another reset, but they did get a tick out of it. Yeah, they did get a slightly more than a tick, but... Uh, what happened in that fight? They used their one ultimate, only gained one. So not a lot of uh, ultimates for them coming into that. So they should have... Actually, they may actually end up having five uh, if they can build them up this kind of poke stage. But on the other side, we will be having four nearly five ultimate. Uh, the Nano Blade and the EMP could be massive. Uh, if I'm them, though, you engage with the Nano Blade while the Transcendence is still off the map. However, the rally comes out from Crazy Mage early. And it, the Blade, EMP, Nano all comes out. Liam goes down. EMP taking his health down to 50. Blackstroke goes down. Keandre does get brutal, but already made advantage here for the side of Storybook Villains. But Everfrost punishing the aggression coming out. Cobalt and Kirby both go down. Echo gets Crazy Mage grabbed from Logan. The Nene grab anyone, however. The Nene grab, but. D Daiko gets Logan with his own grab. Wrecking Ball's the only one on point. Everfrost almost turned that. They did get a tick. Or a tick, sorry, however. So it is worth it, but Logan with a bit of a choke on the grab. 60 seconds. Yeah, I mean, he choked there in all honesty, but I was talking about how they could have just invested the EMP or the Nano Blade, but instead they go with the EMP and the Blade. They uh, do to a couple of nice picks from Punishing the aggression from SVV, they are forced to use the nano boost as well, but they do make it work as the bomb gets thrown in on the point. Yeah, and he is going to get hacked, however, so he is going to be down, but he is going to contest. And they only, Everfrost only need the one pick, and they're already building up to it so close. Cobalt dives right into the mines, but he is going to primal and to keep that Kirby now over to the Doomfist to try and stall. Cobalt, however, Discord gets taken down, focus fire. Everfrost just trying to get this point, Kirby on the... Doomfist stalls it out, and Everfrost, they're gonna finish, and they're gonna have 15 seconds in the time bank left. Yeah, 50 seconds. That's Those 50 seconds are huge. Um, no matter what, uh, if Storybook villains do bitch, uh, cap up all of the map, they will get another chance to go at, go at it. But Absolutely. This, yeah, but this was a... A decent attack. It took them, I think, exactly two minutes to cap second point, but thir first point, it took them like three. So, it, was it bad play? No. Was it good? No. Was it good enough? Possibly. We'll Absolutely. have to see, though. I would not expect any compositional changes, though. They've. Uh, storybook villains were finding good success with this, but against these all comps, which I like, uh, like we talked about in the break, I think this is what they should just be running with the entire time. Um, they have absolutely. managed to make get get some good value out of it. Yeah, absolutely. Black Sharks on that ash. The Everfrost has done a really good job of using of wrecking ball and of playing around the ball, playing around Keandre's dies, and just finding pick after pick. However, Storybook Villains playing around the blade, playing for that blade, playing around Kirby, and it's and it's really been a fight of who can get the better dives here on this fourth map. Now, ever now, Storybook Villains has to cap here if they want to advance adv uh, adv to take this series. Excuse me, whilst while Everfrost is fighting for this series. However, Brutal on the Widow, not something we've seen that much, but we did see it from Rialto. He did have those two picks on that on that final fight to to full hold Everfrost here. So we'll see how it works out for them here. 
Just a slow poke phase here. A group of villains waiting for their time to strike. However, Everfrost not giving them much to work with. Everyone just kind of poking. Brutal, however, gonna rotate in. However, he is gonna get spotted up by Keandre. Breaking Ball screws up his grapple. That might have cost him, but Logan gets Brutal with the long range right click. However, uh, Storybook Villains just gonna be continuing their rotation through this right room. Wrecking Ball gets anti, but he is just gonna be able to roll through. Cobalt, bit of a feed there, uh, very ahead of his team. He's gonna get taken down. Wrecking Ball with the slam gets stunned up, and he's gonna get taken down with the anti. So, 5v4 situation here for Storybook Villains, so there is still a chance, and with their tanks coming back, it is going to be a 6v5 in a. a 6v5 in just a moment. Bit of an interesting play here with the DPS on that left side while the rest of the team rotates around. Nobody on point for Storybook Villains. However, as I say, that Wrecking Ball is back to the side of Everfrost, so it is finally going to be a 6v6 fight here. Cobalt going very low. Wrecking Ball tries to follow him up to get that pick, but not gonna happen. Very slow play here from both teams. Unlike what we've seen before, we've seen a lot of aggression but both teams playing it very safe. However, Cobalt going in, the dive comes out from Absolute from Storybook Villains, but nothing happens. But Echo Force gets taken down in the counter dive from Wrecking Ball and Keandre. And man advantage here for Everfrost, as they're most likely gonna hold. Kirby gets taken down by a nice headshot from Blackstroke, and Storybook Villains forced right back into spawn. Yeah, Storybook Villains forced to reset. They're in a situation they probably shouldn't have. They played slow. And it cost them. They should have played a bit more aggressive, turned up the tempo sub, and they probably would have been in a better situation. But now, they will have a Nanoblade very soon, but uh, the Transcendence will be there to counter it around the same time. So I think they engage with a Pulse Bomb, try to get a good pick off, and there it is. Doesn't get anything, though. Yeah, Cobalt on that high ground, however, looking for the dive. He is going to poke his head out, drops the bubble, and he gets the bubble. But Wrecking Ball on the counter dive, he gets stunned up, and he goes low, and he's going to get taken down. Really good counter dives coming out here from Wrecking Ball on the Wrecking Ball. Pulse Bomb comes out from Keandre, gets Wisp on the AoE, dam AOE damage, and Rally Kit did come out from Crazy Mage, but it looks like Storybook Villain sent back to spawn in just a minute on the time bank now. Yeah, only a minute left on the clock here for Storybook Villain. Everfrost, yeah. they use their halftime break to the fullest. They have looked rejuvenated and revived here, and they've been put in some great play and they have some ultimates to try to get this full hold here. Um, Graviton Surge will be the big one. The Nanoblade versus this Transcendence. They need to try to figure out how to force out the trans. However, Keandre goes down to Dicopath and Wrecking Ball gets stunned up. The into really good focus fire coming out from however Blackstroke gets brutal, but already Liam has already gone down. Three down for uh Ever frost, but they are gonna commit the Bob. Bit of a wasted ultimate, I'd say, as he gets knocked off the point. Can't even contest, and it looks like Storybook Villains gonna be capping this point up for now. Logan and Crazy Mage, the only remaining two for Ever Frost, and it looks like the Ever Frost do want to re-engage. Logan drops the grab, and he does get Kirby, but Wrecking Wrecking Ball does get taken down by Ever Force again. Ever Ever Frost is fighting this. Logan goes down, however, Crazy Mage goes down, and that's a bit of a misplay there. They are going to be losing that first point. That was not a great decision there. They should have reset, given up the first point, and then just played through second. But they did try to re-engage, and it cost them. Uh, they cost them a couple of ultimates. The Bob and the Graviton Surge is the big one. That's an early pick, but I think Blackstroke does get the three second respawn and he will, so he is back in the fight already. Absolutely, but, but a snowball very possible here as four ults and the blade coming out here for side of, of Storybook Villains grab and Pulse Bomb. Wrecking Ball goes down early. Logan with the transcendence trans. gets it forced out, but Blackstroke gets taken down by Brutal. This is not, this is a horrible situation here for Everfrost. Kirby with the blade chopping down a hedge. Crazy Mage. Logan gets there taken down. Brutal. However, already four kills in this fight. Wrecking Ball gets taken down, and it's an absolutely massive time bank for the side of storybook villains they rolled through second point off the snowball after a bit of difficulty on first point yeah that uh second point defense might have been a bit easier if you had a graviton surge <laughs> <laughs> but, who would have thought yeah but they two end up uh, going down there and giving up with uh, almost two minutes worth of a time bank so storybook villains in a decent situ uh, spot to close off this series but 
that last point, something that I tried to highlight uh, was you saw the Gravitron Surge and the Pulse Bomb get thrown in forces out the Transcendence. Um, which, from Liam, which means they don't have that then for the Nanoblade, which did come through and got three of the last four kills. And so if they had that, um, if the blade had been committed slightly earlier on in that fight, it could have been a very different situation. Yeah, a lot of mistakes that are coming out for Everfrost on that defense. Wrecking Ball too, get got stunned, slept up, and got taken down really early by Storybook Villains. Uh, Bruno even committing the pulse bomb to that to con just to confirm the kill, and after that went on to get four in that fight. It's gonna be uh, Everfrost attacking here first. Storybook Storybook villains with the larger time bank is gonna have that defense. Almost three minutes in the time bank for them, two minutes more than Everfrost, so it's gonna be do or die here for them if they want to stay in this series. A draw is possible, but not the situation that they would like. Yeah, draw. Uh, so it is drawable, but never what you want to see. Wrecking Ball on that high ground. Cobalt did not want to go up or missed his jump. I don't know what, but Wrecking Ball still going to be on that high ground. Just dueling Kirby, poking him out. The pile driver comes in. Cobalt goes over to the high ground where the rest of Everfrost is. He gets stunned up Discord, and once again, bit of a feed. Dykopath, however, gets crazy made for the long range. Right click and already huge anti from Echo Force. He's been coming up big. It's just Logan and he is going to be able to survive. However, no main tank for Storybook Villains means no engages. Wrecking Ball now in that back line. 10 seconds left for the side of Everfrost. They're going to have to touch this point. Most likely going to be Wrecking Ball in from behind trying to touch this point. He goes rolling in. He's just trying to stall out the point. The bubble comes out. The die from Cobalt. They have to keep th this point touching, however, just to stall it out. Wrecking Ball gets stunned, but he is going to be able to live through it. Bit of a slow pace here. Kirby, with a, a bit of a feed, Cobalt in the small room gets taken down. However, Logan gets taken down, so it is a winnable fight. Brutal with two kills so far. Everfrost needing to touch this point. Liam pokes his head up for a moment. Brutal absolutely carrying this fight for his team. When Kirby's not there, someone will be able there to do it. Storybook Villains cleaning up this fight. They just need a tick. And they will take this series. You talked about how that was a carry for Brutal, and it was. I mean, he picks up four kills in that fight. Uh, it was looking kind of disastrous. Brutal, I picked up two, and then, and then the uh, Blackstroke's like, you know what? I can do you better. Answers back with three picks of his own and puts them and puts Storybook villains in a very winnable situation here with not a lot of time left on the clock. Absolutely, but it is going to be Storybook Villains here with three minutes just to get a single tick and to close out this series, Everfrost has to be fighting a nail and tooth for this. And it, uh, we did see them play some good play on Hollywood. They were able to hold off Everfrost, but they don't have the luxury of a long long cart pushing. Just a tick needed here for Storybook Villains. Nothing too interesting on the comp side. It's going to be the same as ever. Someone's going to have to come up huge for Everfrost, and we haven't really seen that that much. Cobalt now over onto the Wrecking Ball. Huh. We'll see how he fares on this. I, if he's going to stick with it. I would tend to say I like this, but <clears throat> for how storybook villains have been playing so far, I don't know if I do. Um, if, yeah, he especially with on it, though, this, I, if he is comfortable with this, if his level of play on Wrecking Ball is the same as what it is on Winston, I think this is the right call. Absolutely, but Wrecking Ball has been good on his own, but he gets stunned up and already bubbles forced out Kirby on that engage, trying to get some more ult charge, but nothing much. However, Ever, Storybook, Everfrost was able to hold for a very long period of time on the first defense, so it's not out of the question for a draw here. They're fighting for their lives. Already a very slow pace, similar to what we saw that first fight. No one really going in. They're just looking to time their engages. Wrecking Ball, the, really the only person doing much on the side of Everfrost, going in, getting those, getting that little bit of damage onto Kirby, forcing him out, but nothing too much so far. Storybook Villains playing very conservatively. However, Cobalt now going into the backline for Everfrost. No! That's not great. Um, <laughs> But, however, ever, ever, Storybook Villains do have the time. They are going to be able to hold this position for now, as Everfrost don't want to do anything too risky here. 
Keandre and Wrecking Ball, however, on that corner looking for that dive, and they are just going to be waiting. Cobalt now back on the Winston, something we've seen a lot more from them, and it has been successful. So we are going to be see seeing how this plays out. One minute and 30 seconds on the time bank. Half of Storybook Villain's time already gone off that fight. Bit of slow. Keandre with the Pulse Bomb, Liam with the Transcendence, but however, the Blade uh, from Kirby. Hainu now channeled from Brutal. He finds anything here. This would be huge, but really good play here from Everfrost to avoid that. Kirby now in the back line trying to get Blackstroke, but the peel comes out from Crazy. Now Blade comes out. Transcendence there, right there to match it. Kirby getting knocked around. Liam drops to point to keep Wrecking Ball alive, but it's not enough. He's gonna go down. Cobalt gets stunned up by Crazy, but it's not gonna matter. He stays alive, but Kirby gets taken down by Blackstroke. He's come up big. He's gotten a good picks, but Liam goes down, three down for the side of Everfrost, they're gonna have to clutch up Logan down, it's just Blackstroke, percentage ticking up, they have to touch and that's gonna be the series, Storybook Villains with a 3-1 victory over Everfrost. Yeah, the Storybook Villains uh, managed to take it in a series that went longer than most people would have assumed. Well, I think not, not would have assumed, but I think should have, I think they could have. Uh, cleaned it up a bit better, but I digress. So, decent performance as Kirby <clears throat> fails to get all three, uh, all four play of the games. Only gets the first three, but yeah, good. It's, that was a really phenomenal performance for him on that Genji. I mean, Absolutely. that was some incredible stuff. Absolutely. Someone on the first two maps, saving a lot of fights, and on the bot final two, closing out a lot of them. Bit of a lackluster from Hollywood, but he brought it back on Volskaya Industries, and and he was able to secure them that snowball. However, Everfrost can walk out of this loss with their heads up. It was not a it was not an empty showing. They were able to show a lot of their play. Wrecking Ball looked very good on his pick, and the whole team came together for this. And for, we are going to be choosing our MVP for this map. And Joe, what do you think we give this to? Um, <clears throat> I, I, uh, there's okay. There's one player. I mean, I think that you have to say it has to be um, Kirby. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> absolutely. I, I don't know what else to say. I mean, this kid carried three of the four maps in a lot of ways carried a lot of map number four. So some good good play by him over on the Genji. Absolutely. And Kirby, lots of kills rarely coming up with anything less than three. However, I do want to highlight some other players from the side of SBV. Echo Force with a lot of really good nades there in that in those fights. He was hitting a lot of those and it won a good bit of fights for SBV. Yeah, so good stuff. Uh, I think we're going to a quick break while we set up the interview. So we will be right back, and then we should have uh, Kirby here to give us a quick chat.
Hello everyone, welcome back to our match between Storybook Villains and Everfrost Storybook Villains with the commanding 3-1 win, and we have our MVP for the match, Kirby. Congratulations on your win, and congratulations on your great Genji performance today. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. I got uh, to how, beat up a lot of people. <laughs> how does it feel to be getting those 3Ks, 4Ks, and what do you think was really enabling you or making them work for you winning a lot of those fights? Um, shout out to my boy, uh, Echo Force, uh, Diana, go crazy. Uh, get, he gets nano fast. I like it a lot. <laughs> can match my, can match the Genji. And sometimes he even, uh, oh, laps me sometimes. He's pretty good. Um, also shout out to Cobalt. He gets the, he gets the engages going so he can take them cooldowns out of the picture. And, uh, thanks to, um, I want to thank my, my parent. I'm just kidding. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I felt really good tonight, and uh, I like beating people up, so that's what I did. All right. Absolutely. A stellar performance there. And Joe, did you have something you wanted to say? Yeah, I was just going to ask. So, of course, you were playing Genji, uh, who mm -hmm. is considered an off-meta pick. Is it a comfort pick, or do you think that Genji is something that could really be uh, used in the meta? Oh, I just like playing Genji. Okay. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> 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 uh, okay, okay another follow-up question with the genji mm -hmm. are, are you a genji one trick is this is this um, fact i i used to be a genji one trick and then i evolved into a genji doom two trick and then uh now i'm just a normal flex dps who's pretty good at genji <laughs> absolutely and and a question for you. Li Zhang was very back and forth, and Hollywood was so very close, but Everfrost managed to squeak this out. And were you mm -hmm. really surprised by how close these maps were? Um, for Hollywood, yes. Uh, Li Zhang, uh, I don't know what happened the first map, I'm going to be honest. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it was uh, quite fun. I got to play the JCLE on Control Center and, uh, you know, beat people up. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> um but apart from that i think hollywood uh, was quite surprising for me at least uh especially on our attack round we were doing pretty well throughout the entire attack until last point i think it's just because of the way they positioned and how we were trying to get in and what we were trying to do that ultimately just left us a, a bit clueless sometimes but you know we squeezed out the win on the last map Absolutely, you were able to squeeze it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I uh, I think that's all I got. If uh, Raise the Blood, you got anything else? Uh, one more thing. Kirby, do you have any messages, anything you want to say to anybody you will be meeting to in the future? Anyone, anything you want to say to Everfrost? Uh, oh, let's see. Uh, this is a message to everyone in the Outlet Tournament. My name is... Uh, Kirby Bro 69 and I beat people up. Be aware. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Thank you again, Kirby, for coming in and congratulations on your win today over Everfrost. Oh, thank you, thank you. It was very fun. That's gonna do it for us. Joe, do you have anything else to say? Um, follow the Twitch channel. Uh follow Twitch channel, join the Discord if you're not. Oh, follow my Twitter. You can see it below my name. Uh, Razorblade, do you have a Twitter to plug? Nope. <laughs> All right, well, pretend, be, be much, uh, emotionally follow Razorblade. There we go. But yeah, yeah go. that's going to be it from me. And um, uh, there is another match going on right now on Owlette's main channel in between M Meow Legion and Monarchy. Currently, Meow Legion are up. 220. So go catch the remainder of that match. But once again, I was Joe Razor, joined here by Razor Blade, and uh, we hope to see you around later.